One pitch to Roland. Nolan Arenado, ground ball to short, this could be two. Underhanded to Xander for one, over to first, in time, double play. Robert Suarez rolls the 6-4-3 twin killing, and he puts an end to the Cardinals' eighth inning. And indeed, welcome in everybody to a, a short edition of Gwen and Chris on this Wednesday following Padre Baseball. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace studios and on his way home from Petco Park where he called uh, this afternoon's game alongside Bob Scanlon. Of course, the great Tony Gwynn Jr. joins us as the Padres beat the Cardinals today 3-2. to two. Tony Gwynn Jr., I was looking at the box score from this game and I saw a lot of things stuck out to me. And those things don't usually lead to a victory. The Padres were 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position today. They walked six batters. They hit four more batters. And yet they still found a way to win. That's kind of a nice thing once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you, could fi- if you could find a way to scratch out a win, given those circumstances that you just gave, uh, you got some. You got some good luck on your side. That's for sure. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, exactly an all-time great Hall of Fame performance today. But you know, Joe Musgrove. I thought when the Padres really needed it. I mean, he went out there and gave them six strong innings. The bullpen was wobbly, but again, you know, Robert Suarez willing to come in, get the five-out save, nail down the victory defensively. They made some big plays behind him. Uh, turned a couple of key double plays. And uh, just got the – and then on the offense, you go 0 for 11, but they still managed three runs. They had productive outs, and they got a big home run from Higashioka. So, you know, they found a different way to win a game. They did. And I would say that this is probably the worst they've looked with runners in scoring position. I, I thought, you know, although the numbers haven't been spectacular, I thought that for the most part, with runners in scoring position, they've done a good job. You can see them trying to work. Today, I didn't think they looked that great. But nonetheless, they were able to to get, as you said, they had the big hits that they needed. Uh, they did have some uh, some good situational outs. Um, didn't necessarily result the way they wanted to. But sometimes it's going to go that way. You got you got to find a way to, to win a game. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, I know. Before Scraby gets on the air and starts uh... – explaining to all of us how this was an absolutely positively must win game oh, hold on. before he gets on the air and starts explaining to us that this was a game they had to have yeah because yeah. otherwise they would have my goodness fallen to three and six and the sky would have really been falling despite him thinking that I do feel it was kind of one they needed I mean you got to get out of there with yeah. one win the final game of a home stand you don't want to get swept. And you don't want to be chasing 500 this early in the season. You want to stay close. And so I do think it was kind of a game that there was some urgency today. Yeah, I don't think, as uh, I guess, for as much of a must-have as you can, eight games, nine games into the season, I guess this would be it, all right? They, they, they definitely didn't want to go on their first road trip, albeit just three games, uh, having just got swept by – a Cardinal team that is, is really young and inexperienced. And so uh, to see the team come out and, and get that victory, despite all of those things you, you, you just kind of went through, uh, it's encouraging. And I thought the most encouraging thing today, though, was Joe Musgrove. I mean, he was, he was a sharper. He was sharper than we've seen him at any point, even going to spring training. And, uh, I thought that was good. I mean, to see him and Darvish get better each and every start. If that trend continues, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, the Padres gonna be in the right all right spot. Yeah, Joe, Mus- Joe Musgrove becomes the first Padres starter to uh, log a victory this season. The uh, previous three games yeah. were all credited to relievers. So uh, yeah, Joe comes through when you need him, and he, that's the guy that I would want on the mound in a game that you know there is some urgency and. Uh, as we've kind of said that that there was some urgency here today. The other thing is Kyle Higashioka. I mean, this is a nobody talked about him in the Juan Soto trade. It was all about Michael King and the other pitchers. And oh, by the way, we got this backup catcher. I mean, my goodness, he showed what he could do today. That fourth inning was about as an all star of a fourth inning as any catcher could ever have. He threw out two base runners and then came up and hit a home run. Yeah, I mean, listen. Um, I said this at uh, post game. I mean, 
over the course of a long season, you're going to need guys to step up and play well. And Kyle did it. Yes, he had the homer, which was obviously big because it ended up being the game winner. But the two throwouts, right, you, you're able to throw out two base runners. Who knows what happens if those guys end up safe, right? I mean, the inning can completely change in, in, that, in that regard. Uh, and he was able to nap. And now he, he shouldn't get 100% of the credit because there were some great pickups, one by Bogey, one by Kim, uh, to be able to get those tags down the way they did on, you know, I think some fairly tough hops. Um, but, you know, to have him step up for Capistano, who's been, you know, arguably the Padres' best hitter so far this season, uh, that was huge for the Pops. Yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, look, I, I, I mean, Joe Musgrove also has to get some credit. He does a great job. I, at least I think yeah. he does. Yeah. Keeping runners close. And that's something that, you know, the young Cardinal left-hander, Zach Thompson, could use because, I mean, the Padres had three stolen bases today, and every one of them was stolen on the pitcher. There was no chance for the catcher, the Cardinals, Herrera, to throw any of those guys out. I mean, they had huge jumps. So, I mean, your pitchers yeah. have to do a good job and give your catchers a chance. But, you know, having said all what, of this – well, go ahead, Tony. I was going to say what's interesting about left-handers, either they have a good move or they don't. And if they don't have a good move, that's kind of things that happen. I, I, I was in the clubhouse earlier, and there was no doubt that uh, David Messia is the Padres' first base coach and identified something. I didn't ask him what it was. Uh, I kind of caught some of the conversation in ear hustling. But he identified something, and they took advantage of it uh, once, once the game started. Well, the running game was big today, and uh, you know, defensively I, I thought the Padres were real good today, and again they found a way to win. But you know what's interesting, Tony? We can talk about all of this stuff, runners in scoring position, throwing out runners, base stealing, Joe Musgrove. But I knew without question before this game ever started that the Padres are going to win today. And I don't normally have a, have a feeling like this. Where is this going? Well, I'm going to tell you where it's going. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. It's going right behind home plate where my man, John Tumpain was calling balls and strikes today. <laughs> and when you got the Reaper behind home plate, the Padres are always going to come up big I refer back to game four of the Dodger playoff series in the rain a couple of years ago. I love John Tumpain, and I like to see him come out there and cool the Cardinals down a little bit after that fourth the batter got hit. He made sure nothing got out of control. The best umpire in Major League Baseball right there today, Tony. First of all, he gouged a couple guys with his reaper on, on, on strike three. Look at his reaper, <laughs> he gouged a couple of them. But, I, you know, it was interesting. Clearly, Peralta in a in a two run lead is, is not intentionally hitting guys. No. And listen, I, I get where the Cardinals iron was coming because those guys were kind of hot after the second guy. I think it was Donovan got plunked. There was some there was some commotion. I thought he did a good job, as you said, of kind of common depth. It's clearly it wasn't on purpose. But as I tell you guys, if enough guys get hit, it stops being about whether it's on purpose, and it's more about hey man you got to start figuring it out regardless of whether it's done on purpose or not but he did a good job kind of de-escalating it and kind of everybody getting back to baseball uh certainly i won't be surprised at all if come the this cardinal series in st louis uh there's a couple guys that get plucked for five yes one thing we know about baseball players they have long memories and uh, long long memories. yeah the cardinals will remember that four guys got hit today and uh there probably will be a little retaliation, but uh, when it's all said and done, Padres get a much-needed win, 3-2 over the Cardinals. They'll have tomorrow off, then head up to San Francisco tomorrow evening, I believe, and get set for a three-game series on Friday. It gets underway with uh, Dylan Cease on the mound Friday against the San Francisco Giants' first true road game of the season. Tony Gwynn Jr., always great having you uh, join us uh, after a day game. And uh, you being with us, and you know, I know you are excited about this as I am, but I think I'm going to talk to you tomorrow morning at about 10 o'clock for the round table, the first oh, big yay! one of the year. I forgot about the yeah, round it's table. a good so, thing I remembered. I reminded said, you, he said, Yay! <laughs> I know he did. It's be so much fun breaking down the, 
nine games of baseball. <laughs> That's right. We're going to be hitting it from all angles oh, tomorrow yeah. morning at <laughs> yeah, 10 o'clock. Yes, Tony yeah. and I will join Craig and Annie and <laughs> Ben and Woods and Sammy, and we'll all be in there talking Padre baseball. So make sure that you tune in tomorrow for the 10 a.m. Padres Roundtable. We'll take a quick break. We are underway on a short show today, heading towards 6 o'clock, and the Scraby Chronicles, which returned to the airwaves this evening after a couple of days off. And uh, more Gwen and Chris headed your way next. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Tannock. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline Instant Drive to Oil Change, a 15-minute instant drive to oil change. A couple of problems in the North County, Northbound 15, just before Valley Parkway, there is a collision, not showing the planes are blocked. Also an accident on the El Pino Real off-ramp of eastbound 78. We still have this car fire stop on 504 H Street, it's got the right lane blocked. And the Cordell and Cordell traffic cans is a stalled car taking up the fast lane, southbound 15, right before Adams Avenue. Valvoline Instant Oil Change is your drive through oil change. It only takes 15 minutes, and you don't have to get out of your car with all the rain.
Welcome back into uh, uh, Gwen and Chris. 527 is the time, Scraby. That means it's time to go to break, so we'll step aside. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we're running a little up against the bottom of the hour here, well, but the, yes. the show is a little, uh, a little off-center because we came on after Padre Baseball today. Tony joined us on his way home from Petco Park, mm-hmm. and now uh, Scraby and I are here to take you uh, the rest of the way, right up until 6 o'clock. Then it'll be... The return, boy, I bet the Scrabinators. Uh, what Scrabinators. are they The Scrabinators have been uh, been uh, suffering for the I, last few days with Padre Baseball preempting your show. It's actually kind of nice that people have yes, sent they miss me you. a message saying, I can't wait for the show tonight. It's a good way to get more popular. You make people <laughs> miss you. And... Uh, I will say this again. I have a huge announcement at 620. 620 tonight. Make sure that you're tuned into the Scraby Chronicles. He's got some uh, good news for everybody. So that's coming up. I also want to remind everybody, and we touched on it with Tony there at the end of the last segment, but tomorrow is our second Padres Roundtable. Now, we had one to preview the season. uh, What was that? Two or three weeks ago. I didn't get to take part in that because I was in Las Vegas with the uh, Aztec basketball. But I will be taking part in the roundtable tomorrow, along with uh, Ben Higgins, uh, Craig Elston, Annie Heilbrun, and Tony Gwynn uh, Jr. Yes, Jr. We'll all be on tomorrow to break down the first nine games of the season and uh, discuss everything that is Padre-related. It'll be a one hour. Is it still commercial-free? It used to be. I, I don't want to. Is that what I don't wanna, Reed says? I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, no, it is. Yeah. Incorrectly. No, no, no. Read the read. That's the official word. Read the read. Yes. All right. Here it is. Tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. for 97.3 The Fans commercial free. There it is. Padres Roundtable featuring Ben and Woods, Annie and Elston, and Gwyn and me presented by San Diego Roundtable Pizza. For takeout or delivery, go to roundtablepizza.com. Roundtable, mm, mm, the mm. last honest pizza. When Tony mm-mm-mms that, he means it you when know. it comes to roundtable pizza. He loves me? that. Uh, I love it, too. I and, too. Uh, haven't had it in a while. understand we'll be having roundtable served during yeah, I wish, the roundtable tomorrow. I wish everybody could be here when I I'm broke so the news to Chris that, that there yeah. was going to be roundtable delivered because obviously we can't do the roundtable without roundtable. As a matter of fact, you can't listen out there yes. to the roundtable without enjoying some roundtable. Yeah. So uh, that's tomorrow morning from 10 to 11 and every Thursday moving forward here in this Padre season, we will uh, be breaking down all things Friars and uh, just one last thing on that. If you miss the roundtable from 10 to 11 a.m. tomorrow, maybe you actually work. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> like, you, you do know, maybe, actually Maybe work. you actually have a job out there. I expect everyone if to call you, in sick every day. You, yeah, right. If you do have a job, I'm happy for that. But uh, maybe you have a meeting. You can't listen to the roundtable. We will uh, have it for you again tomorrow afternoon from 5 to 6 p.m. Correct. So you get two shots to hear the roundtable every Thursday. Padres over the Cardinals today, 3-2. It was indeed the first one-run game of this new season. Took nine games for the Padres to participate in a one-run affair. You may recall last year, the Padres' record in one-run games was 9-23. and Don't remind me. They were the worst team Like in not only in baseball, but they were threatening to be like one of the worst one run teams in the history of baseball. I think also extra inning games they couldn't win. Well, they didn't win one until the last two weeks of the season last year. At one point, they were 0 and 10, I believe, maybe 0 and 11. (laughs) Anyway, they got a one run win in their first one run game of the year. Thanks to Robert Suarez, who got the five out save today. Thanks to Kyle Higashioka, who homered, threw out two runners trying to steal. And uh, as I pointed out, they won a game in which they did not get a single hit 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position today. Their pitching wasn't really. I know Musgrove got the six innings and the win. He did. I didn't feel like, and I'm sure Joe would probably admit to this, that wasn't like the sharpest he's ever been. He hit the first batter of the game. He fell behind the next guy. Yeah. Kind of cobbled it together. 
That double and, play uh, in the in the first inning that was, was big. huge. That was big. That turned things for him right off the bat. I agree with you 100%, Scraby. But you know what? The good pitchers, and Musgrove is a good pitcher, they get the job done even when they don't have everything working. And he got through six innings today. I thought the bullpen was basically doing a tightrope act the entire time. I mean, what happened? Wandy Peralta was so good in spring. Yeah. Uh, well, Johnny Burrito was so good in how spring. How many times have I told you that spring know, training doesn't matter? But, but, but they don't understand how it could change so dramatically. And they're you know still what? pitching Wandy, to major league hitters Wandy in spring pa- training. No, they're not. A lot of them are minor league hitters in spring training, and that's why it so doesn't honestly, matter. So honestly, what is the point of having those guys face just to get minor yourself, league hitters? Just to get your, yourself ready for the season. Okay, I'm sorry. But here's the thing. Wandy Peralta, if you can't throw a strike, you can't pitch. I mean, that's just it. And he hit two batters today, and, you know, he was kind of bailed out there by uh, Suarez in the uh, top of the eighth inning. Another five-out save. And I wasn't – and, you know, and again, Cosgrove – you know, the seventh inning, I'm not a big fan, even though he got through the inning. I'm not a big fan of coming into a game and walking the first hitter. That's not it's that's not, not a recipe for success. No. If you're a relief pitcher with a one run lead. Did he get through it? Yes, he did. But I, I'm not a fan of, you know, Cosgrove comes in, walks the first guy he faces. Peralta comes in, he hits the first two batters he faces. Suarez comes in. He walked the first batter he faced. And I know that Arenado hit into the double play and the inning was everything. But if Arenado sticks one into the gap somewhere, you're now losing 4-3 because of that walk. Don't think I had that dread in the back of me. No kidding, man. You can't you can't survive, you know, if you're a good relief pitcher and you're a good bullpen, having your guys come in and walk the first guy they see. That's That's not going to hold up. But that guy it did is today. more than likely going to it uh, is. hurt you. It's going to come back and get you. But let it, me. It I, worked out today. So. I want to ask you about this though, because yes. I saw so many times last year the Padres with bases loaded early in the game, and they just didn't do anything with it offensively. Offensively, yes, right. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Today, first inning, bases loaded. Yeah. Eggy Rosario strikes out. It's going to happen. But they got to be better with guy with, with the bases loaded. You got to cash in those opportunities. Agree. They got to run because of Profar walking. I mean, which is a, still a run. Look at how they scored their runs today. They got to run on a walk. They got to run on a ground ball that Fernando beat out. It was almost a double play, but he got there in time. And then Higashioka's home run. Which was huge because it ended up being the winning run. 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position. Again, not a good recipe to win. But it worked out okay today. Just don't want to keep following that recipe. And, um, you know, I do agree with uh, all the things that Sammy was saying on the postgame show, although I will not go as far as to agree with you. What did I say? Uh, You said this was a must win today. An absolute must win. They're three and five. If they lose this game and go to three and six, it's over. And when I say it's a must win, I don't mean it's a must win like their season is actually over. Mm-hmm. But it was a must win for their for their confidence because nah. the last two games they should have won last night. You even got Tony Gwynn Jr. to agree to the point that as much of a game can be a must win in the ninth game mm, of yes. the season. Yes, this was that. It was. It so was. It was huge. I, I think it was. I agree. I, I'm agreeing with you. I think they. I felt like they really needed to get this one. You could not lose this in a sweep, and, and start chasing 500 this early in the season. You want to stay right there, and they are chasing 500 still. But you uh, four and five sounds a whole lot better than three and six. Ugh. Heading matter? into the off day it's and heading into San win, Francisco. But it does carry so much weight. It mattered. It mattered today. So uh, solid. And uh, we'll have a lot more on that on the round table tomorrow. I'm sure Scraby will have more on that and the Scraby Chronicles later on this evening. Do we need to take a break here yeah, in the middle of <laughs> where yes, we, we are? Do. We do. All right. When we come back, what else was going on in the sports world today? I can tell you that a superstar NFL player today was traded while you were probably watching or listening to Padres baseball. We'll tell you who it was, what it means, and everything else that went down today in the sports world. Before we get done, it's Gwen and Chris on 97.3 The Fan. Coming up on Thursday's show.
Hey everybody, it's Scraby here for SD Fat Loss, and I lost 40 pounds thanks to their program, and I'm feeling good heading into summer. There's still some time left. So if you're trying to get fit for summer, then you need to check out SD Fat Loss because they have found a solution for quick weight loss and also healthy weight loss and lasting weight loss. I know I have more energy now. I know I'm eating a lot better and I wake up every day thinking that I'm in a much better spot and I want to keep it that way. So they've helped me with the maintenance part as well. There's no prepackaged foods or injections or anything like that. All you need to do is follow their plan and it has a lot of different options. Once you see that weight coming off, it's going to be real hard not to keep doing it. I lost 40 pounds and summer is going to feel a lot better for me this year. And it can feel a lot better for you. You still got time to get in shape before summer. Call SD Fat Loss right now for a free consultation. 858-665-3211 or go to sdfatloss.com. All right, a uh, couple of things you need to know from today's Padre victory over the Cardinals. 
Padres win a run, a one-run ball game after going nine and twenty-three last year. They win their first one-run game of this season. Joe Musgrove becomes the first Padres starting pitcher to pick up a victory this season. Previous three games were all uh, won by relief pitchers. Interesting. So Musgrove gets the first win for a starter, and Kyle Higashioka becomes just the fifth catcher. In the last 63 years, not bad. Not bad. To throw out two runners in an inning and then come up in that same inning and hit a home run. I'm surprised that's happened more than five times. Fair point. The last one to do it, former Dodger and Houston Astro catcher Joe Ferguson in 1977. Oh, man. So this happened... This had not happened in almost 50 years. Well, that makes more sense. Right? To me. It had been almost 50 years since anyone has thrown out two runners in an inning and also homered. Padres win despite going 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position. They win despite walking six and hitting four batters today. Something that Tony Gwynn Jr. pointed out to us. Be careful when the Padres go back to St. Louis later this season. The Cardinals will no doubt remember that. Yes, uh, I, I, I guess I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but if Tony's saying it, then yeah. it is a big no, deal. No, they weren't happy. I'm trying They're, to look. When did they go back? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I'm looking. Uh, I've got the schedule. Oh, but oh it's the end of August. Oh, it's a well. They're gonna have to have a long memory, Ooh. but I'm telling you, those four game series too. Those guys have long memories. Yes, they'll they do. remember that in August. Hey. Remember when we played these guys? They hit four of us. Remember when Victor, I think his last name is Scott. Victor Scott took hit one in the, of the chest. Ribs or the chest. He or got it right it in the chest. Uh, let's see who else got hit. Brendan Donovan got hit in the first batter of the game. Wilson Contreras took one on the hand. Mm, oh, yes. He yes, wasn't yes. pleased. No. But no, I hey, look, there's no way Wandy Peralta's throwing at anyone with a one run lead in the eighth inning or a two run lead in the eighth inning. You don't want to put anybody on base. That's why it wasn't a big thing. But still, guys don't. As Tony said correctly, even if you're not throwing at us on purpose, get somebody on the mound who can figure it out. Because we don't want to just come up here and be, you know, crash test dummies. So I, I don't blame the Cardinals for being a little perturbed by that. Yeah, that's not a very comfortable place to be if, if someone's hurling a rock at you at 95 <laughs> miles yeah. an hour. And doesn't seem to know, doesn't where know where it's going. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't have any idea where it appears to be going. Uh, some quick baseball updates, and then I'll get to that big football trade. Um, the Pirates, 5-0 and on the season, but trailing 5-3 at Washington in the bottom of the seventh. If Washington goes on to win, that would leave the Detroit Tigers at 4-0 as the only undefeated team in Major League Baseball. Tigers were rained out again today against the Mets. The Mets are still one of the winless teams at 0-4, but that's a far cry from where the Miami Marlins have started. They get blown out by the Angels today. I think it was 10-2. No. And so the Marlins fall to 0-7. And I I saw Buster Olney point this out today on a tweet, our friend Buster Olney. By yeah. the way, now that I mentioned it, make a little note to get him on the show because I always like having Buster on. But uh, Buster Olney pointed out, wonder how the Marlins are feeling now in the post-Kim Ng era. Remember, they just kind of unceremoniously dumped her. Yeah, they fired her. They didn't fire her. No, she They demoted down. her, okay, and she yeah. said, uh-uh. You're not demoting me. I'm out of here. I don't know. A demotion to me is a firing. Well, I, I don't disagree with you, but the you're right. The yeah. official cause the official was cause demotion. was her quitting. Yes, yes, yes. But it was a, as a result of her being demoted after she had, you know, turned the whole franchise around and led them to a playoff berth. Yeah, yeah. it was quite an interesting move. Very interesting. Marlins zero and seven. I don't recall where she hooked up. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, keep an eye on that. The A's are doing wonderfully bad at one and six. The Rockies are doing wonderfully bad at one and five and probably on their way to another loss tonight. Let's see. Yep. They're down four, nothing in the third, <laughs> the Rockies. What a joke they are. Uh, <laughs> and you know, the other team that's off to a slow start, your guy, Josh Hader and the Astros, my guy, your guy, Josh Hader blew the save last night and the Astros fell to one and five. 
Uh, for those keeping track right now, Robert Suarez has three saves. Josh Hader has zero. Zero. So and he's just, pitched a few times. Yeah, keep that little nugget in the back of your head as the season moves I mean, along. I don't want to keep talking about Josh Hader, but it just – opens up so many doors when you have a guy that's willing to go five outs. It helps. It, it, I mean, Mike Schilt had to do it today. He had to. He went with lefty, lefty, and then you've got the tying runs on base, and they had Goldschmidt, Contreras, and Arenado coming up. That's three right-handed batters. You can't just leave a lefty in to face those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had to go with your righty there. And just hope that Suarez could get to the finish line. And uh, good for him. He did it. He did. All right. Uh, here's the big football trade today. I, it was a big one. Uh, the Buffalo Bills send Pro Bowl wide receiver Stephon Diggs packing. They send him to the Houston Texans. Ooh. Now, you got to believe that the Bills, in trading a guy, that had more receptions over the last four seasons than any player in football. I mean, you can make a case that he's right there with Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, anyone else you want to mention, right? Devo Samuel. Ta okay, I didn't want to mention Brandon him. Ayuk. All right, all right. <laughs> Jawan Jennings. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> One of the top receivers in all of football. Yes. So the Bills send him to the Texans. In return. In return, two first round picks. The bull the Bulls, the Bills get a 2025 second round pick. Okay, that's pretty big. That is? Yeah, a second rounder is a is a valuable pick from what I gather. They also will get either a sixth or a fifth round selection in 2025. And that's it? They didn't trade any players or anything? No players. It was Stefan Diggs for picks? For a couple of picks. A couple of uh yeah, draft pick compensation. That's it. That tells me one thing. They just so they just desperately wanted, wanted him out of there. But if you so desperately wanted him out of there, and we heard all of the rumors about Josh Allen versus Stephon Diggs, and the more they denied it, the more I believed that there had to be something to it. Yeah. Because they spent a lot of time denying it. Yep. Um, But if you really wanted to get rid of him, I don't know why you're trading him to a team that is – essentially one of your top competitors to get to the Super Bowl. True. The Houston Texans are going places, people, right? With C.J. Stroud, they acquired Joe Mixon. Forgot about that. I mean, this team is on the way up, up, up. One of the, the Texans. Hot, the hot up-and-coming coach. Right? And they give them Stephon Diggs basically for nothing. I. I don't get stuff like that. It doesn't like even that. make sense. I mean, in I don't conference, get conference, you're going to possibly face. It just I know they're not sense. in your division, but, you're, you but even, if you win your, even if you win your division, who are you going to run into? Yeah. You're going to run into the Texans. Yeah. I, I, I just CJ don't get Shout it. do it again, though, but this is going to help a lot. I don't get it, man. Stephon Diggs, unless he's, you know, unless he just did four years and, you know, he falls off the map, uh, this is a pretty good player, you know, that you're getting for hardly anything. Uh, the Buffalo Bills general manager, Brandon Bean, said today, are you ready for a, just a load of BS? Yes. He said, I really appreciate everything oh, Stefan no. brought to the organization. Oh, no. And he went on to say, these moves are never easy. Really? Seemed like it's pretty easy for you to do this. He also went on to say, this is by no means the Bills giving up. Or trying to take a step back. When you have to say all these things, it's not good. You don't. You shouldn't defend stuff with what people are worried about. Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, 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 yeah. Uh, Mitch Morse, starting center, receiver Gabriel Davis. Oh yeah, Gabe. Davis. Outside linebacker Leonard Floyd, all gone from the Buffalo Bills this offseason. Brandon is asking on the chat: Is the Bills window closing? I think it's closing, but honestly, I will say this. As long as Josh Allen is your quarterback, you should still have a pretty decent chance. Yeah. And we're not starting the season yet, so we don't know what they're going to, you know, go out and try to get draft to help someone. Josh Allen. They'll yeah. either, you know, in the draft or, you know, make a trade somewhere else. But as of right now, I mean, uh, we're pleased. 
It's great. Oh, the Dolphins are pleased. We're pleased. Yeah, I'll that's true. You watching on the YouTube? I mean, yes, I guess yeah, the Fon Diggs did kill every oh, my AL. God. We couldn't I guard just him. I said AL East, AFC Yeah, East. we couldn't guard him. We never guarded him once in all of the years he played against Miami. This so. is really going to prove how good Josh Allen is. I mean, either way, they're not going to get st- a, a receiver of Stephon Diggs' talent. Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. That's yeah, pretty Gabe much. Davis. Well, that's just two guys. That's true. It I is, mean, he had a yeah. third guy there no, you're right. you're who right. – uh, I forget the third guy who uh, started to oh, yeah. make some plays there down the stretch. And he was out. He's pretty was, good. He was out playing Gabe Davis. He was. Of. Can't remember his name. I can't either. remember his name offhand, but uh, they did have a third guy that had did some things. But uh, let me look it up now because I, I, oh, I don't want to just. You. It's going to bother me to, you know, throw it out there and then not be able to say who it is. Well, while was you're it that- uh, Shakir? Yes. Khalil Shakir. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. He's a San Diego guy, is he not? I don't know. I think so. Didn't Tony just hang out with him? No, the that other was day? Rashid Shaheed. Oh, <laughs> my bad. There's uh, a lot. I mean, there are a lot of Rashid Shaheed, Khalil athletes. Shakir. Yeah. You can see how I got confused. Uh, Khalil Shakir is from Boise State. Ah. But now he's a he was a nice, you know, looking like a breakout type receiver. So we'll see what Buffalo's still gonna be good because they're gonna have Josh Allen. All right, uh, the other football news, by the way, before we turn this over to Scraby and the Chronicles. The Chronicles. The Kansas City Chiefs were turned down by the voters in Kansas City to use any kind of taxpayer money yeah. to improve or get them a new stadium. Yeah. Um, hey, Kansas City, welcome to our world. Thank you. You know, we went through this. Thank you. The Dallas mayor <laughs> is not feeling exactly heartbroken over this in fact he is deciding to wade through the carnage oh gosh and he oh man the dallas mayor has said we'll take the chiefs how about moving them here wow really could you imagine the chiefs and the cowboys both in dallas no the dallas tech or the dallas chiefs well they and and be, it's funny right? you said the Dallas, you're about Texans. to say the Dallas Texans. Yes. That's where the Chiefs originated before they moved many, many years ago to Kansas City. I can't wait till we have more time tomorrow for me to just crush the owner for wanting the people to pay for his stuff. You don't like that kind of deal. Sorry, I just got a little It can angry. be your daily gripe if you want. Oh, thank you, Chris. All right, stick around. Scraby's got big announcement coming up like 20 minutes from right now. It's for all of you. What are they called? Scrabinators. The Scrabinators. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy you're back tonight after missing a few days. Thank you. How dare the Padres preempt your show? Well, they need to win and it'll be okay. We're back tomorrow at 2 o'clock, but don't forget we're part of the roundtable at 10 a.m. Have a good rest of your Wednesday evening. Scraby's next on 97.3 The Fan. Hey, before I go, I got to tell everybody that uh, the guy at uh, 